Thank you, viewers. Welcome to our today's lesson in social studies. We are going to start with our today's topic. Topic one in social studies, that is physical, sorry, let me take the physical environment. I'm going to take you through that topic one across from class six, seven, and eight. Then we are going to see how questions have been being brought in KCP since 2000 up to what we, we are expecting to have 2020 KCP. So please stay tuned and as I take you through this. Thank you. So the first part that I'd like to take is map. One, you'll know that at this particular part on the physical environment, we are only going to talk about the map and map work. Map and map work. Map and map work. So the first, the map is a presentation of something on a piece of paper. Is a presentation of the earth on a piece of paper. That is what we call a map. And we are going to see that we have different types of map uh, at this point. We are going to discuss different types of map. The first one, we have what you call the sketch map. Number two, we have what you call wall map. They are also called topographical map. Then, I'm only going to talk about this sketch map. That is my point of interest. Because in map and map work, it only talks about from number one up to number seven. So that is the area that I would like we concentrate much. This sketch map, I can as well sketch this map here. Maybe let me sketch the map of Kenya, or the map of Africa, sorry. You are going to identify that this map is sketched. But remember, all the maps, they must have some principles. The first principle is that a map should have uh, a title. That is the first thing. Number two, the map should have the scale. Number three, the map should have the frame. Then we have the key, and we have the compass. All those elements are the one to identify that this is a map. But without them, then we are going to see that it is not a map. So a map should have all the elements. Let us, let me now take this map into a frame. I want to take my map into a frame. That is the first element. Elements of a map. Number one, we have the, the title first. Number two, we have the frame. Number three, we have the key. Number four, we have the compass. First, let me talk about this. For example, this is the map of Africa. 
map of Africa that is our title that is our title map of Africa then the frame is here the map of ours it has us a frame then number two the key of course the key are going to show the structures and the symbols within that map that is now the main interest the key portrays and the key is the main element of a map so the map without the key it is not going to make us be able to interpret that map so we must have the key which shows different symbols and different structures and features within the map so our map it must have the key down here and those key are going to show the symbols that are represented in the map so the first thing that we must be able to know that the map should have all elements including the scale so the scale these are the key the key let us assume that we have a uh, quarry here i'll come here and write something of that sort this mining mining which take place maybe in a given place then within that key we have uh, the mosque within that map we have the mosque that is the symbol of a mosque mosque it is a place of worship so this one it shows that this particular area there is mining and this particular area there is what you call worship going on and those people who worship in the mosque of course they are muslims so that is what you are supposed to know then we have what you call the scale the scale is mostly indicated down here the scale is indicated here and in most cases in all kcp papers the scale that we have been using all through it is what you call the linear scale linear scale from the word line linear and it always range from 0 it always range from 0 and it can go up to 50 up to 100 depending on the area that you want to cover so let us assume that our scale this is 5 this is 10 this is 20 this is uh, that is 15 to me give a difference of 5 0 5 10 15 20 then this one is 25 so remember the scale should be in kilometers square that is our scale it's now in kilometer so that is the scale that we mostly use so we have the scale which i've already demonstrated we have the compass a map should always have the compass direction this is the compass it must be there and it always points to the north to be clear this compass it is not let me write it outside the frame it is here for it to be clear and the arrow points to the north we assume that that arrow is not pointing upward it does not mean that the north is up the north it is the direction at which the arrow is pointing let us assume that this arrow points at this direction so our north is going to be there i hope that one i am well understood so this is the arrow the compass and this is the arrow pointing to the north then this is our scale this is the key we have other features which i'm going to explain as the lesson progress then we have the title which is there then we have the frame which is there then of course all the elements are included in the map so that is the structure and the outline of what you are going to discuss today and see how questions are being being brought from uh, all the way from 2000 let me start maybe 2010 up to 2019 so i'll also take you through that uh, by the uh, at the end of this lesson thank you so let us discuss one element 
one by one. An element one by one. Maybe I can get I can get maybe for much explanation I can get the word that is the slide to come uh, so that uh, you can see what I've been explaining here uh, for you to understand better. But before that, let me still take you through on this. We are going to discuss one by one. So let me first start with the comp uh, compass. 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 A compass, this one will have to give us the direction at which something or uh, something points. The compass, it always tell us the direction and it always give us to a place where we want to go. This compass, it is the first one we can as well call it cardinal points, the first four cardinal points. And the cardinal points are as shown on the board here. This is the part where the arrow points. It is north. This one is east, west, and south, and west. That is north, east, south, West, that is the four main cardinal points, north, east, south, and west. So these points will always make us to identify at which direction are we trying to point or where are we going. So this, the northern part, let me draw it here. So this point will make us to know. For example, I'll give it a relevancy to the, our map here. When somebody is at the mosque and uh, there is a market here, there is a market at that place, and you want to locate, how will you be able to locate? You are going to use this compass. You are going to use the compass. Now. Somebody is at the market, but wants to locate where the mosque is. So you are going to stand at the market. You draw your compass at the market. Once you have drawn your compass at the market, indicate the points. Arrow points to the north, east, south, west. Then you draw a straight line. To where the mosque is. These are straight line up to the mosque. Then you are going to take the two points. So that is south east. So our mosque is located in south east. The mosque is at this part that is south east. That is where the mosque is. Then, of course, all this direction you'll start reading from the north, going in anticlockwise. Do not read going uh, in, in going in a, a clockwise direction, not in anticlockwise. That is the direction that you're supposed to take. So when you start reading from here, always go in clockwise direction. And of course, this one covers a total of 360 degrees, all of them. We assume that this one is at 90 degrees. Then, of course, this one is going to be a half, that is at 45, 45. Then this one, when you cover all these one, from here up to here, it is going to cover 180. So from all the way, when you rotate, all the way. So this one is 180, this is 180. All the, all, 
when you add them together, it gives you a total of 360. I hope I'm well understood. So there is something also I want to make you aware. So let us say that somebody is at this point at 90, but he has only covered 22 points clockwise. At which point is he going to rest? So when you take this person is at 90, but he covers 22 points de uh, degrees clockwise, that person is going to rest somewhere here. So you are going to take 90 degrees plus the 22 points or degrees that that person has covered. So it is going to be 22 degrees. You add them. So this one is going to be 2. Then this one is going to give you 11. So that is a total of 112 degrees, remember. So that person is going to rest somewhere uh, at this point. At this point, that is 112 degrees. So that is the point that that person has covered. So the second part, remember we are only talking about, this is the first one, which are called the main cardinal points. Then we have what you call the eight points of a compass. Let us also check the eight points of a compass. The eight points of a compass. The eight points of a compass, here it is going to give us, it is going to give us the eight uh, compass direction. Of course, those eight compass direction, you can see them. Uh, the first one, it is that, right, north, east, south, west. So this is north, east, south, west. But you are going to put the four. This is the, the four, the, which is the main. So you are going to add another one, the four. So to add them, you remember that in between south and east, there is southeast. In between north and east, there is northeast. In between north and west, it is northwest. In between south and west, it is south. West. The first reading, do not say west north. You start with the main one. And always I said to know where north is, you check on the arrow. So this is going to be north east. This one is going to be south east. This one is going to be south west. This is going to be south uh, north west. Of course, that is what has been portrayed earlier on the screen, so for you to understand better. So I also want, for example, now when you want to locate something, of course that one is going to be easier. We assume that we have the mining center at this place, then we have uh, the church, that is the cross of a church. Now, what is the direction of the quarry from the church. From, it is where you are beginning, uh, you, are, you are starting at. From, that is now where you are, you are supposed to indicate your compass at this point. Never, that is, north, east, south, west. You draw a straight line. Never eat skumawiki. We can that as well use that one for you to remember better. Never eat skumawiki. So that one, it will make you to understand and understand it better. So you are going to take these two. So this one is going to be, the point is going to be at the east. That is where our quarry is. So these are what you call the eight. You can as well locate on the southwest. You can locate on the northwest. You can locate on the southeast. You can locate in any points when you are given on a question or when you are given in a paper. 
and that is what we will have to discuss uh, as the lesson progress. Then there is also that part, there is also that part, there is also that part of the 16 cardinal, 16 compass, 16 compass uh, direction, the 16 one. For the 16, the 16 compass point, mark this one, the 16 compass point, you are going to see that we are going now to demarcate the 8 one into other 8. Of course, the first one it is this. That is the first. Then the second, we are going to draw it as shown on the board. That one is on the east. So that is the first eight. Then you are going to subdivide it further. You just subdivide it. So you will start with these ones, then followed by these two. You'll start by the main one, north, northeast. For this one, at this point, remember, there is also another one at this point. You are going to start with this one, which is the main, east, northeast, east, northeast. So at this point, we also have another one. You start with this one, east, southeast, east, southeast. Then we have this one here, which you have also to start with this, which is the main, south, southeast. Then at this, you start with the south, then followed by these two, south, west. Then here we have west, southwest. Then we have at this part, you start with this one, that is west, north, west, northwest. Then we have this north, north, west. Of course, these are the eight, now 16 compass direction. So when the, a place, it is so inside, so that you cannot maybe be able to see. Of course, you are going now to use the smaller one. Maybe you can locate a place using this. Let us say that uh, we have a, uh, we have, uh, let me say, the tree at this part, the forest. Then uh, we have uh, the church at this part. That is the cross. So how do you be able to locate the forest? How will you be able to locate the forest when somebody is at the church. You are going now to use this compass. You say that maybe somebody is at the church and wants to locate at this place. You are going to use your compass. So that one, of course, it is automatically pointing on the western side. But at a time, so you'll find that, that is, the answer is not there. But maybe they want that of the 16. You're going to see that there are small other points which are pointing there. So maybe the point is at this part of uh, west, southwest. So if this one is not there, of course, they are, maybe they want you to give the 16 compass direction. Of course, you're going to get the answer to be west, southwest to be the correct answer. Of course, that one will have to give you a direct answer if that one is not there. Of course, these are something that I've taken you through. You can take your time. You also go through it and you improvise on that part when you want to answer questions. So let me go to the next part quickly. 
Let me go to the next part. Sorry. Let me go to the next part, and that one is what you call the scale. The scale. Of course, we have different types of scale, but the main type of scale that we want to discuss today, it is what you call the linear scale. And the linear scale, it is going to give you what you are supposed to answer when you are given questions in social studies. For example, we have here, we have here maybe different parts. We have here different parts which you are going to use the scale to, to discuss them. The scale is just a representation of what is in the map and what is on the ground. So you, it is going to give just a representation and you are going to use it for to answer different questions when you are given. And for you to answer these questions, what are the requirements? The first one, you are supposed to have maybe a piece of paper, a piece of paper. That is the requirement. Two, you are supposed to have uh, a thread A thread. Three, you can as well have a pair of compass or divider. That is divider. Then these two are the most common, which is used. And of course, you are not supposed to use an elastic piece of uh, an elastic thread, which will have to give you use non-elastic, which cannot stretch further. Of course, this one, which is not uh, elastic, it is going to give you an accurate measurement. For example, you are going to have this. When this one is the scale, it ranges from 0, then it 10, then we have 20, then we have 30, then we have 40, then we have 50. So that is the scale that ranges from 0 up to 50. And remember, is in kilometers. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that one, you are going to put a piece of paper when you have. You put it here, a piece of paper. You stretch it further up to here then you are going to use that one to get the correct measurement. Of course, you want to, for example, you want to measure the road. The road ranges from this part to this part. So that road, you are going to start always from zero when you are measuring. Always start from zero, not any other. Not 10, not 20, or at any other point. Always start from zero. Maybe it is a state line or a state railway. Then put here and measure it up to the place where they said. If they said at the junction, of course, this is the place where the junction is. Just stop at this junction. And remember the point at which they said to begin. That is a place where you need to stretch at. Now, from this point to this point, maybe if it is the road that goes in a zigzag way. You are going to use that one. Measure this one going round the way it is coiling up to this part. Let us say that the road now diverts into different places. So this one will have to take a piece of paper, go around it, go around until you reach to the point where they said. When they say at road junction, that is the place where you are going to be, here. You start at this point, then transfer the same. Mark the point without changing. Transfer into the scale. Measure it, put it here. Then you can be able to read the measurement. If it is at 50, go to where the 50 is. 50 kilometer, of course, you can indicate. And then you go through it. At times, it might not be accurate. 
it is an approximate. So when they say an approximate, of course you are going to see there are 49 or something to do with the 51 or positive plus two or plus one is acceptable. So you are going to see which figure or which number is next to that. And that is the part that I want the learners to take note of. Never use an elastic material. Use non-elastic material to get an accurate measurement. So we are going to move to settlement and maybe I can get the PowerPoint on settlement for you to know what settlement is. Settlement. Now I'll have to discuss on the key. The settlements, it is the people living within uh, the area, within that area. So these settlements pertain the following. You are supposed to know that we have different types of population distribution within an area. We define population that is the number of people living in an area. And do not define it people living in an area per square kilometer. That is population density. So you'll have that the settlements are distributed around that particular uh, area. So the first thing that you're supposed to know that the settlements can either be found within the human activities that is being practiced in an area. We can have the road which has been constructed by human beings and that road maybe it is not in straight line, but that is the road, that is the road and the road goes on that manner. It can either be uh, Maram or Tamak Road. So this road, of course, it is, we are going to have people living across it or around it. When you find such like types of population distribution, it is called linear. Linear. Why? Because it is found on a line along the road. So the settlements are mostly shown by the dots, whether they can be squared dots. And those dots are the indication that there is settlement. Then B, another type of settlement that you'll have to come across. Another type of settlement that you'll have to come across it is what you call the clustered, clustered settlement. The clustered settlement, how do they look like? This clustered settlement, look in this manner. The clustered settlement, you are going to find maybe this one is a map. And that map, we have some people living at that corner. We have others living at that corner. So there is a, a very large group of people that are concentrated in one area, but at different places. So we have this one, this, this, and this. When you find such like uh, a scenario, of course you are going to give it clustered settlement. How? Because there is a distribution of people who mostly live in one area and concentrate there. Then there is also another one, but within that area, it is called the clustered settlement. It is slightly different, slightly from nucleated, slightly, slightly different from nucleated. How? Let us see the nucleated settlement. Nucleated settlement, of course, this is how it is demonstrated. This is the area, the whole area. Of course, it is uh, just, a, I'm using just a frame. And then there is people settling around that place. When there are two choices given in any scenario or in any paper, of course, there is part that they need most. So the other part, I've said that this is the area and then we have the people at that point. Then to this part, 
we have only one area. So this is like, just like a nuclear family. It is just like a nuclear family. There are people living in that part. So this one and this one, they are slightly different, slightly. Of course, we have others which say that clustered is the same as nucleated. But I want to give you that it has a slight difference, that it lives only in a nuclear manner. This one alone, it is called nucleated settlement. So that nucleated settlement, of course, it gives you a leeway to identify the two and to give a very uh, different between this nucleated and clustered when uh, you approach such a like question. So at a times in an area, the area can be densely, when it is densely, sorry, the area can be densely, that is the frame, densely, where the population is found everywhere found everywhere class. Then at a times, you can find that the population, it is sparse. Sparse. They are not concentrated at one point. This is sparse, this densely populated. So when a question comes, they want you to uh, at least understand that which types of population is found in an area. So it can be sparse, it can be densely, it can be found along the linear, it can be clustered or nucleated. And those, the population or the settlements of people are cultivated or influenced by different factors. They are influenced by different factors. What are those different factors? The first factor that you must be able to know it is the human and economic activity. Human, sorry, human economic activity. Human and economic activities. Human and economic, economic activities include things like road, mining centers or mining places, mining place. We have number three, let me use the word centers, mining centers. Then we have, of course, transport. We have other social activity such as uh, we can get, of course, you can get like uh, things to do with the market and many others as displayed there. You are going to identify that all those ones are some of the human economic activities which are facilitated by people to settle around a given place. So this one, I'll have now to give how relevant, how relevant are they to the people? When you find people first, when you find people living along this place, let us say that this is the road. This is the symbol of the road. And then what is the main factor that affect the people along this part? Of course, it is transport. It is transport. Then, of course, there is communication going on. Transport and communication. When you transfer information from one point to another, of course, it can be by means of road or by means of any other form. That one, it is going to be transport and transport and communication. transport and communication. Then 
This is the main factor that has influenced because the people only choose or select to live along that path. Then, at a times you'll fi find people settle around the center. Maybe this one is the market. Then we have the police office, PO. We have the governor's office. I'm using the symbols to explain this. So this is the market. This is the police office. This is the governor's office. But people, you'll have to find that people like to settle around that particular area. Particular area. So when you find the people living around this particular area, what are the main factors that has facilitated these people? One of the reasons it can due to social amenities. There are so many social amenities around this place. That is why you have to find people around uh, this particular place. Then number two, number two, of course, you can as well get something. I've said social amenities. Number three, a given type of people like only to settle where there is uh, some other factors. This is the road. And this one is the junction. Then we have this, this is the town. Then there is some group of people which are around this particular place. Why do the people live around this? I said it's social amenities because there are so many other uh, social centers which as well can be of help to them. But now, why do this town develop so fast? Compared maybe to, we have some other uh, areas around this. We have this, this uh, maybe this is the uh, police station. This is the governor, uh, the, the, this the this is the mining center. The mining center, let me use the simple mining center. So why is it that this place has not developed compared to this? It is because of the road junction. I want you to mark that road junction. Can as well uh, make things to develop so faster in an area when you maybe you, you, are, you, you are tackling questions which are related to such like. It is the road junction. Why are they only connected at this and not at that part? Then there is also something that can be facilitated, and that is other economic activities or social and economic activities. It can be mining centers. Mining centers. Another factor, it can be government policy. People tend to move where there is a town. And when a town develops, it can be due to the government. Maybe this town is at the exterior or the interior part, the interior part of the map. We assume that this town is at this place. But you have so many centers at this. Why was this town transferred? Why was this city transferred to the road junction? It can be one of the factor can be government policy. But that one we are going to see how are they going to be relevant here. So those are some of the factors which can as well affect the settlement of the people. Then I also want to take you through I also want to take you through a given direction. That is the river. Let us see the river. 
A river can be found in an area. But I want you to mark the following. This river is the one that is going to show the place or the highness, the gradient of the, the gradient of the area, the gradient or the topography, which is the highest part and which is the lowest part. Of course, you can be best on the different factor, but a river should be one of the major. The first one is a river to know the gradient or to know the topography. To me right here, the gradient. The gradient, that is the highness and the lowness of a place or which place is higher and which place is lower. First, you check the source of the river. Two, you can che check on the type of vegetation. Number three, you can check the crop grown. crop grown, and then number four, you can check on the relief, relief features, or as well, you can check on the drainage features, other drainage features, relief or drainage features. And one of the drainage is a river that should give you the, the, it should stand out to give you the best. Now, types of vegetation, the types of vegetation, the crop grown, relief. Now, let me discuss one by one. Let me discuss one by one. Let me start with the river. Maybe let me demarcate my area part. Yes, a minute. So river, the river has different parts of the river. The river has the first, the river has the source. I can say first that a river is a stream of water that flows across the country or across the area. That is the river. It has a stream of water that flows. A river has the source. The river has the mouth. Those are the two parts of the river. Then you're going to have that. A river can also have the tributary. Tributaries. A river also has an, what you call, uh, it can, uh, uh, that is. But tributaries or uh, the tributaries or estuary. When I talk about, I'll explain this one so that it doesn't confuse you. I'll explain them. So when I draw this one, of course, this is a river. This is the middle part at which these are the tributaries. Tributaries. And tributaries always originate from the source originate from the source. So the source of this river is at this particular place. So when I write my map here, then I write this river. Of course, this is the source. So this source, the river is originating from south. Let us now use our compass. South, west, going on this one, which is northeast, northeast. So that is now where the river is going to. So the river has the tributary which are found on the source. The river has the mouth. The mouth of the river is at this particular place. So this river, maybe it is draining its water into a lake using only one branch. We call it an estuary, an estuaries. But you'll have to find uh, some rivers drain into a lake, into a swamp, or into any other places which is on the lower part using more than two branch. This one, we call it delta. And examples in Kenya here, we have the Tana Delta. Of course, that is the best. 
uh, in Kenya. We have the Tana Delta. We also have the Nile Delta and some other deltas in Africa, the Niger Delta, which is uh, one of the largest delta. So this is uh, an example of what a river it entails. But now my point is on the gradient. How will you be able to know that this place is the lowest and this place is the highest? Of course, one is the river. And I've explained this, the river has the source. The source is here. The river has the mouth. The mouth is at this place. These are the delta. One branch is an estuary. Then the tributary meets at this place, which is called the confluence. The point marked X within the map, it can be called a confluence. Of course, this is a confluence, or the feature at this point when the two tributaries meet or join the main river, we call it a confluence. So I've explained about the source, the mouth, the tributary, and an estuary. But we have different activities along the river. At this place, when the river now joins the main one, at this place, the river has low volume of water. They can ask you within the map, which place has the lowest volume of water? It is at this place. Why? Because we have some small channels which are now going to measure into the main one. At this place, we can have waterfalls. In the map, they can ask you, at which particular point will the learner be able to visit for any uh, activity that they want maybe to visit for social studies? Of course, the best place to visit at the beginning how? Because you are going to see the features like waterfalls. The waterfalls now originate at this place. Then it now builds up into the main one. At this particular place, you are going to have the feature like erosion. The river now erodes. Erosion. Once it erodes, now it goes and forms something what you call the deposition. Deposition, it's now formed at this particular, at the end. Some of the river, some of the soil are deposited into the sides, the river banks. So this is the deposition, erosion, and of course we have uh, the, the waterfalls which can as well be built there. Then there is something that I like to explain. Deposition, which feature can be formed around this particular place? It's an Oxbow Lake. Oxbow lake. Oxbow Lake is likely to be formed at the mouth of the river or at the end of the river. Then we have different names which are given. These are the youthful stage, these are the middle stage, and this is the old stage. The young stage, the middle, and the old stage. So of course I've explained and I've given you the summary of what it entails. Let me take you through some of my areas that I like to touch, which will be of help to the learners who are ready to sit for KCP. So there is some part which I like to summarize. You have seen the display of different areas of the river. Of course, how they are being formed, what are the features formed at different levels, and how can you be able to get the topography of the land or the gradient. So when this one is a map and you ask a question, the lowest part of the map, the lowest part of the area, the, uh, the lowest part in the area is likely to be, you check these are the factors. One, the type. The, the river source or where the river drains, the types of vegetation. You can, you can find the types of vegetation to be this. We have uh, trees. So these trees are likely to be found to act as where the, there is more uh, land being raised. So the land can be the higher at this particular place. So we expect maybe the river to originate from this. So this is how it indicates. The trees, unless if it's planted, but most of the natural 
are found where the land is on the highland. Then we have the crop grown. The types of crop grown on the highland, on the highest part, it is tea, mac, coffee, and pyrethrum. These are the major types of crop where they are mostly grown in the highland part. And which type of soil? The type of soil is what you call the red volcanic soil. They are likely to, this type of crop are likely to do better in the red volcanic soil. So as I take you through, we can also find that we have uh, other things like uh, maybe the physical features, the mountain. A mountain, this is the mountain. The mountain can also be found on the lowland. For example, we have the Shimba Hills. Uh, it is found on the lowland part of Kenya. So this, this one, this mountain, you now check the mountain peak. For example, this one can be two, 20 meters, and this one can be 340 meters above the sea level. Now, the highest part you check on the mountain peak, it will tell you in which direction is the lowest and which direction is the highest. So another thing that I like to touch, it is best on, uh, it is best on the, uh, questions that can as well arise. And these questions, you are supposed to approach it uh, systematically. First, you go through your question, you read the rubric, you study the map. After you have studied the map, go through the key and go through the map. Make sure that the key entails the symbols which are supposed to be used in the map. Then you read question one as you answer it, question two as you answer it up to the last question. Of course, in any KCP paper, you will not miss what I'm discussing here. That is question one up to question seven. And if you get them right, then I want to assure you that you only have 53 questions to deal with. The seven ones you have already cleared. And this is the only part that you can now uh, uh, maximize to get the things right. So I want to just brush you through some of the question papers and uh, the KCP question papers, how they have been being brought and what are the relevancy in terms of answering them. When you have a ranch, when you have a ranch, a ranch is always established a place where there is cattle dip or cattle keeping. And a ranch needs space in most cases. A ranch is not something that you can just uh, maybe decide uh, from nowhere. It needs a space. So one of the factors that can facilitate for the ranch to be established, it is the space. Class, mark that one. Another point that you are supposed to know that these symbols that you use, you must study the different symbols. Different symbols, one, we have the symbols that are used in the uh, different religion. For example, we have the Christian or Christianity. Number two, we have the Muslim, uh, Islamic, sorry. We have other religion like uh, the Hindus. So all these are the, and any other religions, because it is so diverse. So Christianity, this is the sign. It is shown by a cross. And we have those who worship mostly on Sunday and those who worship on Saturday, especially the SDA, mark that one. Then we have and you must know the dominant or the predominant religion in the area or the place of worship. This one is the mosque. This mosque, the sign of the mosque where the Islam worship, 
it is mostly indicated by this. And you must be able to read those symbols and understand them well. Of course, the Islam, they like to worship on Friday. You'll find that on a Friday, that is most uh, time, the convenient day for them to worship. Of course, there is a reason for that. And there is also a reason why the Christian worship on a Sunday and also the SD worship on a, on a Saturday. So you are going to find that all of these symbols you can, they are internationally acceptable. And also for the, they are internationally acceptable, the symbol that is used in map and map work. So these symbols, you can as well use one word. You call them conventional symbols. These are the words which is acceptable, internationally, conventional symbols. Then number two, of course we have uh, advantages of different area. You might have the railway, the rail line. When you have the rail line, you are going to find that this rail line has been used in the map based on the reasons, because everything that is found within an area has a reason. So this railway can be used to transport specific goods, which are which the, the, the specific goods uh, which are being either uh, practiced or grown or, or done in the area. So these goods, one, we have livestock and livestock product. Two, we have timber. Three, we have, of course, when I talk about livestock and livestock products, these are the heavy goods. We have stones. So stones, it's in the mining area. We have uh, things to do with hides, of course, that one. It is there, there are heavy products which are transported from one place to another. So a rail line is mostly strategic and it's found uh, uh, next, the, uh, next to the main places where all these things are found. For example, you can find a rail line maybe originating from the mining center. What was it mainly used to transport? It can as well be used to transport stones or minerals. What are those minerals? It can be soda ash, which are very heavy and bulky to transport. You cannot use an air. Air is used to transport perishable goods and also used to transport most precious goods, at a times fragile. Then you are also going to find that timber, maybe if there is sawmill, timber it's used to transport such like. Uh, the, the, the means of transport, best transport timber, uh, uh, it is what you call the railway. Of course, we have the livestock and livestock product. Where there is cattle dip, you'll find the railway. So a railway in a place is facilitated by different factors. One, I've said, it is livestock and livestock product. Two, timber, we have the stones, and some of the heavy. Sisal is also there. Sisal, we have sugar cane. So these are some of the things that you're supposed to note in an area. Do you have sugarcane growing? Do you have sisal growing? Do you have mining? Do you have sawmill? Do you have a ranch? Or do you have a slaughterhouse? Then that one, it will indicate that this railway is relevant at that particular. So we also have some of the things that I like to talk about the soil. Soil. So this soil, you'll find that the crop grown in the soil first, the first one, the soil, we have alluvial, which I say that alluvial is for tea, coffee, and pyrethrum. Two, we have the black cotton soil, which is also called clay soil. This is the black cotton soil, the clay soil. It's mostly used for growing cotton. It can also be used for growing maize and other. Then number two, three, we have alluvial. It is found along the riverbanks. 
or the river valleys or the flood uh, the, the, the 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 river valleys but flood plain in the plain this is the type of soil that is found in the flood plain when a place is plain which types of soil is this one? Which types of crop? Cotton, alluvial, tea, coffee, and pyrethrum. The climate, of course, at this particular point, the climate is hot and wet. At this particular point, the climate, the climate is cool and wet. Sorry, cool and wet, where tea, coffee, and pyrethrum is grown. At this place, the climate is hot and wet. Then we have the shrub, scrubs, uh, sisal, which mostly you'll find them being grown in hot and dry areas, hot and dry areas. The land, it is bare. The land does not support uh, some cash crop. And of course, it will not maybe assist much in supporting other types of crop. So we also have uh, things to do with the communication. Communication. In the communication, in an area, I'm just uh, sketching. Let me not number them. In the communication, you are supposed to see, do you have a communication mast? Do you have communication line in an area? For example, this is an area, but th this is the road. But you have the communication line following this particular place. So which is the most convenient means of communication in the area? Of course, it's going to be a telephone. And that is the best. So it is, it is facilitated by the things which are there. Or we can have even a telephone mast, a mast. It's just like a booster, used to boost the, in, in the net so that the communication can be easier. So that is something that you should uh, very, very, very concerned about them. So we also have some other parts, like uh, the trade. Trade. Where do you acquire the trade license? A trade license is mostly acquired, one, it is acquired in the councils. It can be the city council, the town council, the municipal council, or in the governor's office. The trade license cannot be acquired in the chief's camp or in the police station. What are the services that you are supposed to get in a police station? Of course, it's for the security. A police station provides security in the area. The governor office acts as the highest administrative office in that area. But you have the government appointee. Of course, the government appointee is going to be the county commissioner county commissioner. Then we have within the sub-county, it is the sub-county commissioner. As it goes trickle down up to the village elder and the sub-chief, which are responsible for the sub-location. Those are the things that you're supposed to be aware of. Then when I talk about the trade, of course, I've said that the trade license is acquired in the councils. It can be the city council, the town councils, the municipal councils and any other council that is found within that area. So then there is also something that I'll have to, t to tell you this. When you're answering questions, always remember to know, to understand the key, interpret it very well, and be able to internalize so that the questions will have to trickle down. And in most cases, do a lot of practice on map and map. Of course, you are going to fix these questions of getting one, two, three in map and map work when you are given a paper, and especially in KCP. I'll stress much to the candidates, especially try to analyze those KCP questions. Then you are going to get that, oh, what I've been discussing, I'm discussing what comes straight from those papers. Then the birth certificate, the death certificates, of course that one you are going to get it uh, maybe sometimes. Those are services. You can get it in the chief's office chief's office. So I have talked much, but of course I'll get another day which we are going to go through it. And of course see the KCP papers. I've just displayed these ones. Stay tuned. Of course, any given time you are free. Of course the number is there. You are free to consult. You are free to communicate.
you are free to ask the question if there is anything that pertains or anything that concerns these social studies, then I'm there to assist. Let us meet next time. I hope you are going to stay tuned to KUTV, a new experience. Have a nice weekend.